Hi, and welcome to the latest edition of Advanced HVAC Control Tips. My name is Liam Blackshaw, and I'm the UK Product Manager for our low voltage drives here at ABB. So this next session now that we're looking at is one of our probably one of our unique kind of features within our drive drives portfolio, but quite unique against some of our other drive manufacturers at least anyway, which is what we call the intelligent pump control. This is available in our HVAC offering, so in the H ACH580, but also in our water offering, so the ACQ580 offering as well. And what intelligent pump control is, is a means to be able to utilise a sort of duty assist system on a pump or even on a fan application where we have effectively a master that can control a number of followers, so up to about seven followers. So you can have eight, let's say, pumps on a system and you have a means of redundancy in which if, one's, if one was to fail, i.e. the master, one of the, the other followers, if, if you know, selected appropriately, will then take up that mantle of master and control the others up until that one that's failed or been switched off will then, you know, comes back online again. Um, the clever thing about all this is the fact that how you can do all this within the drive and you don't need any external control to do this. So you don't need any controllers or PLCs to do this. It's all done within the drive and by adding more value within, you know, within the drive itself, it eliminates the costs to one purchase, you know, those external components, but also eliminates the need to do that additional commissioning as well, at least anyway. Um, it's, yeah, so as I said before, it's mainly used on pumps, pump systems, can be used on fan systems. Um, traditionally, if we look at it from a pumping example, it's more from a parallel pumping example where, as I said before, you've got a duty and assist system where you've got the, the, the master that's doing the duty and then you'll have an assist on there as well. Some key features behind this intelligent pump control as well when we look at this is it's got this sort of auto changeover system as well. So traditionally um, you may have that on a sort of timing system or it may even be manually where you have an operator that operates one pump and after a certain period of time it will you know, swap to another pump and then continue to do that on, on maybe a daily, weekly or monthly basis at least. The, the good thing about this feature is that it that all has that encompassed within that as well, effectively. And you don't need to worry about doing anything manually. It's all automatic if you, you know, set it accordingly. And the, and the key thing behind that is that it evens out that sort of um, wear balance between the pumps, your motors and the drive itself as well, so that you have a much more longer sort of life cycle of the overall system, at least anyway. So let's come and have a look at, in a bit more detail of how that works at least. And again, as you can see here, it all starts from this main menu that you can see on, on the ACH580. I've slightly um, altered the, the menu, um, which we can do in the home section. Um, so we've got this sort of system status, which is a, a nice little feature within the intelligent pump control as well. It gives us effectively a status word or a status of how that pump system is operating. And you can see both at the moment are set to interlocked at least anyway, i.e. they're not ready or they're just about ready to start, but until we put those key, key, uh, key settings in. So under the, the home section itself, we go on to menu. So we select menu and then we're going back to that handy primary settings page. So once we get down to there, which is the second on the list, we then go on to select. Within there, we then go down and we're looking for our pump settings or pump features, should say, and we select that. You can see there already we've got a couple of handy pump features such as dry pump protection, flow calculation and soft pipe fill. But the key one we're looking for is this multi-pump control. And going down to there, we go into select. And as default, um, when you first set up this up for the first time, it'll have pumping mode is off. So what we need to do is select intelligent pump control or IPC. And once we've selected that, we go on to next. And the good thing about this is that we have to define a node number as well. Um, so in this scenario, I'm going to define this as our master. So I'm going to give it a node number of one. And as I said before, we can have up to eight nodes onto this sort of pumping system. So we can have one master 
and effectively seven followers on, on this pumping system. But in this example, um, to keep it simple, we've just got it as two. So I've selected my node, my node number is one. I go on to next. And then I now um, need to establish what the configuration is. So this is our what we call our, our inverter to inverter configuration. And this is how the intelligent pump control works, is basically a one cable solution that we utilize the mod bus terminals on the drive itself and we wire it from one drive to another and we link those up together accordingly depending on how many pumps or drives or motors there are on the system at least anyway. So it gives us the option of how we do this from a hardware perspective, do we do it from our embedded field bus as I said the mod bus or back net or in addition if we're already using that to do some form of comms on the system we can use one of our field bus adapters to use this, which is the FMBA-01. So we choose one of those. In this example, I'm going to go with the embedded field bus setting, so we go on to next. And after a moment or two when it's, when it's loaded up, we've now got, what, we, what we've got here is two additional settings. The settings for this pump and the shared settings. So we're going to start off with the settings for the pump. So we go on to there and, and hit select. And we can also, a good feature behind this is that we can give it a, a drive name as well. So we can edit it to give, it, give us a, a more sort of um, definitive name for this drive so we can sort of associate with what, that, what that's doing. Um, I'm gonna keep it in this example as ACH580, but we could call that as you know, pump number one or you know, supply pump one or two, etc. And we've already defined here our node number. We've also got an option in there as well that defines whether that can be the master or not. Or not it can be the master or not, at least anyway. Um, so you can define if you just want one master, two masters, or even all eight of them could be a masters as well. We've also got here a preference for this pump or motor. So we give it a priority as well. A good thing about this is that we can set a number of these to be on a high, medium or low priority. High being, they're the ones that run first, then it goes to medium and then to low. So I'm going to keep this one as high and then we go on to back. And once we're happy with that, we then go on to our shared settings by hitting the select button. One of the good things before we sort of go into a bit more detail on the shared settings is this first one which is synchronization settings and what that allows us to do is when we select that um, we, it allows us to copy the settings from this drive and share them to the, to, the, to the following drives that are on that system. Under the premise and this is under the sort of um, a prerequisite that we give this, this pump or drive a node number to. So if we haven't given any of our drives on the system a node number it won't do this until we do that. It's only until we give it a node number where it will initialise this synchronisation process. So once you're happy with that, we then have the synchronisation settings which allows us to select the settings to copy between all the drives. As default, it deselects the analog input settings because we normally, with this setup, have, have it as a, as a common setting. So your digital inputs, your analog inputs, will all be commoned out throughout the whole of this section, at least anyway. So we can select that, but we can also select the PID settings, but also the, the intelligent pump share, control shared settings as well. Good thing about this as well is, is key to using this intelligent pump control is use the, the PID control as well. So one of the previous sessions that we've done covers um, a lot more detail of how we set up the PID at least. So under the prerequisites, it's, it's best to set that up and then do the intelligent pump control. Once we are happy with that, we then go on to back and confirm that. And then we look at what the, at what the uh, how many pumps we've got on the system and how many we need to run at least on this system, but never, more, never run more than at least anyway. So in this example, I'm going to set it to be to be two and save that. And then I'm going to look at how many as a minimum I want to run at least. So in this example, just to show you how, how, how good this feature is, I'm going to make sure we run at least one 
one pump or one drive, one motor. But we never run more than two in this scenario because the maximum we've got on this example is two. So when we're happy with that, we can select which one we would ever want to run more than. And then we've also got the setting here for start and stop speeds as well. So what this indicates now when I select that is it tells us at what speed do I need to do I need the second pump or motor or drive to run at? But also when we start to slow this down, at what speed do we want to stop that at as well? So in this example, I've set it so that we start the second pump at 40 hertz and then we stop the second pump at 25 hertz. And when we're happy with that, we save that and then go on to back. And then another good thing as well is this transition smoothing as well. What this allows us to do um, is more of a delay or delay start or stop at least anyway. So under a certain time period, it will allow us to ignore any demands of spikes or dips. So if we get a sudden sort of you know sudden change which increases or decreases the the feedback per se, we can ignore that for a certain period of time before the drive actually realizes, you know. I'm at that, you know, I'm at that spike or dip. I need to actually bring that second pump in at least anyway. So in this example, just to, to just to highlight, highlight how that works, I've set our our on delay or start delay to two seconds and our stop delay to five seconds. One of the key things I mentioned when we're doing the um, when we're doing this intelligent pump control is this sort of also change over sequence as well, which is under the auto change section. When we select that. Using the select button, it gives us options to do a sort of maximum wear imbalance. So, if I've, you know, if a particular, if one of the pumps or, or drives have been running for, in this example, for a maximum of ten hours, it will change then change that sort of imbalance to then effectively say, I'm not going to be the master anymore. Pump two is going to be the master now. But we also in in you know, in sync with that, or in situ with that, have this maximum stationary time as well. So we have a certain period where I've been stationary for a certain period of time, I need to start, you know, start moving. So we can set that as well. We've also got the auto change only below a certain percentage. So in this example, I've kept it to 100%, but we can change that so that auto changeover comes in at a much earlier period as well. The next step, um, assuming that you haven't set it already, is the PID control. And then that effectively is pretty much it with the intelligent pump control, at least with the basics anyway. So I'm now going to go back to the home, home menu. And then what I'm going to do on the second pump or second drive is now set the node number so that the synchronization can now take place. So again, Hitting the menu button, we go back down to the primary settings, down to our pump features, and select that. Down to our multi-pump control, which will be the IPC. And then from there, we go down to our settings for, for this pump. Select that, and then we go on to edit for our node number, and we select our node number, in this case to be two. And once it does that, it will then synchronize the settings from pump one or drive one to, to drive two or pump two. And then we've got the options here that this could also be a master, but also set the priority for this pump or drive or motor to, to operate. So in this example, I've set that one to medium. So we've got this as high priority and this is medium priority. Now that we're happy with that, we can now go back and we'll go back all the way back to the home screen. Yes, yeah, so now that we've set up the, uh, the, the intelligent pump control on both of the drives, we'll now show it in action basically. So I'll just have to show you in this example at least anyway that, um, as, as I said before, the digital inputs and the analog inputs will be commoned up. So we have to, because of the, the purpose of this demo case, is start them both at the same time. So you can see that one of them 
which should be this pump one or drive one will be a master and then the other one will be our follower which is pump two now I've got it set up so that um, we're looking at flow so we're looking at a, let's say a, a reserve system where that, that well where you're pumping into is empty and it's empty so we're trying to meet that demand so we're sp speeding up the pumps to bring that water into there at least anyway so after a moment or two you'll see in there now that pump one was running it was in master we then brought our following in, into action to help help ease that, that relief now at least anyway so we've now got both of them in action without the need for any external control it's all done through one wire or within the drive at least anyway so we'll now start to you know get to a point now where we're starting to fill that you know that, that reserve up or that well so I'll now start to slow these down and I just want just wanted to highlight how good this is as well where based on the PID control it'll start to slow down and eventually our pump two will you know will will turn off basically which we can see there so we've just got the one running and it could be that you know all of a sudden we've lost you know there's a fault on on this on this drive here or pump one so we lose the master which then brings our pump two into play so pump two is now not the follower pump two now becomes the master um, this pump one now if ever there's a fault or it's been powered down switched off apart from let's say the switched off scenario it will now say on standby because it's now saying I'm on standby something's I've either tripped or there's a warning and I need that to be rectified before I go back into that sort of normal situation at least anyway so once let's say I've cleared that now pump two will now come into play or pump one should say sorry that will now come into play and now act as a follower so we've got that, that, that you know that sort of seamless um, transition from you know pump one being the master to now being the follower and vice versa for pump two it now at least anyway and I'll just power those down now and that's yeah that's pretty much the the basics of the, the intelligent pump control at least anyway and it's a really sort of underutilized feature within within our you know within the ACH and ACQ drives where using that feature can save a whole host of costs from you know from components installation commissioning and actually adding more value within the drive itself all by means of you know let's say you know the most 10 parameters and just a single piece of cable for the hardware to go from one drive to the other at least anyway so thank you very much for watching our our latest episode on advanced hvac control tips Please feel free if you've missed any to see any of our previous ones in the list and catch you very soon. Thank you.